today's stitch long I'm using cutaway stabilizer, my curved scissors, my threads in red, white and gold, some pins, masking tape, my fabric scissors, I've got four pieces of fleece batting, I've got four pieces of faux fur and my scraps which I have cut generously for each area of the, the stocking. There are four files that make up this stocking. The first one does the toe, the second one the heel, then the third one here and the fourth the top. So what I've done is I've stitched out colour number two of every uh, file and put them together as if it were the stocking. This allows me to do my planning for my fabrics and I can make a quick note of the stitch order so that I can hang it up in view and just get on with it. So I'm now going to hoop up my stabiliser. I've loaded the first file and I'm now going to pop this into my machine and stitch the outline. Next I'm going to lay down my batting over the top of the outline, pop it back in my machine and stitch it down. Now I'm going to cut away the excess batting from around the edge. And I can now lay down, start laying down my fabrics. Now we do have to leave um, a seam allowance of at least half an inch all around the edge. So I'm going to be placing my fabrics up to the edge of my hoop here. So my first one's going to go in this area here, and my second fabric is for here. So I'm going to place this like so. That's my first one and then I'm going to just crease this back here on the stitch line just so I can see where to place my second one. Now my second one is going to go face down and I need it to cover here and obviously the um, edge for my seam allowance which that does quite nicely so that's uh, perfectly well positioned. So I'm just going to pop a couple of bits of tape on just to hold it. I don't want it slipping about when it's being stitched. And you can use um, masking tape exactly the same way as you would use pins. I don't like using pins unless absolutely necessary because they can, if you get it wrong, do an awful lot of damage to your machine so you should always pin right out of the way and I know I keep saying this but it's really something that you don't want to forget. Okay, I'm now going to pop that back in my machine and stitch it down. Okay, now that that's stitched down I'm going to pull that over, crease really well along the seam, pop a little bit of tape up here and I'm now going to put that back in my machine and it's going to stitch these two fabrics down. I'm just going to remove this tape. Now I'm going to trim up along here to about a quarter of an inch. It's just removed the bulk. Okay, and now 
I'm going to place my third fabric along this stitch line here with the raw edge here again face down as per the second piece of fabric so when that's folded back like so again I've got plenty of seam allowance Fine. I'm just going to pop a couple of pieces of tape just to hold it in place. If, when you're cutting your fabrics with this, I would strongly advise you to cut slightly bigger than you think you need because you need to leave enough for around the edge for sewing it all together later. So it's better to have a little bit too much than not enough. I'm now going to pop that back in my machine and stitch round number five. I'm just going to remove the tape. Open this out flat as I did before. Crease along the join really well. And I'm going to pop a little bit of tape here just to hold that. Where you get these joins here, where you've got two pieces of fabric with one folded over, I advise you always to take them down because your sewing machine foot can get underneath and ruin your work. So for the sake of a few bits of tape, I would uh, take it down. I'm now going to pop that back in my machine and stitch round number six, which is going to stitch down this piece of fabric. The next three rounds, seven, eight and nine, are going to do all the quilting stitches in the three panels. It's going to start with number seven in the toe, number eight at the top and number nine in uh, the bottom left hand uh, section here. So I'm now going to stitch round number seven. Now number eight. number nine. I'm now going to change my thread to gold because for rounds 10 and 11 it's going to do the decorative top stitching along the two joins here. Now stitching round number 10 and round 11. Now that the fifth stitching is finished I'm going to remove it from my hoop. Turn it over, just trim up these threads, and I now need to mark a half inch line all the way around here. So I've cut a piece of card at half an inch wide, and I'm using my um, chalk pen, and on the back of the uh, the, the part, just lay your uh, card up against the edge of the, the pattern and then just mark a line and just follow the pattern edge. And that will give you your half inch seam allowance. Oops. Now you can do this in ordinary pen if you want to because it won't be seen at the end of all the stitching. So it really doesn't matter what you use. I'm just using this because I'm used to using it. <laughs> Okay, 
So now I can cut up to the edge here because that's going to be the join onto the next part and around on the line that I've just drawn around the edge of the toe. that's my first piece completed so now I'm going to hoop oops, get rid of these bits <laughs> I'm now going to hoop up my second piece of stabilizer load um, file number two and stitch the outline Now I'm going to place my batting over the outline. And once again stitch it down. So this is round number two. And as I did for the first piece, I'm going to cut the batting away. stitch order for the fabrics is going to be number one, number two and number three. So I'm going to place my first fabric down over here. Now the important part for the seam allowance is around the curve here. So I want to place that down there. Once again I'm going to fold that back onto the line, do a little crease so that I know where to place fabric number two. And I'm going to place fabric number two face down and I want to make sure that I, do, that I don't miss that corner there like so and then when that folds back I will have my, my seam allowance around the edge there and also it covers this corner so I'm now going to put a little bit of tape down just to hold it in place pop it in my machine and stitch round number three. Now take the tape off, fold this back and give it a good creasing with my nail. I think that bit's lost its stick, let's get that piece. Again here where it could lift. So now I'm going to pop that back in my machine and it's going to stitch those two fabrics down. So now to stitch round number four. I'm now going to remove the tape here. and trim the fabric back here to a quarter of an inch as before. And I'm now going to place my third fabric along here, along this line here, raw edge that side, face down once more and making sure that I get this corner and my seam allowance in here. So I'm now going to pop a little bit of tape on. Pop it in my machine and stitch it down with round number five. Now I'm going to remove the tape. Trim this back a little bit because it's just a wee tad long. Fold 
this back and press it well with my, my nail. And once more, where the joins are, here and here, I'm going to put some tape just to stop it catching. And now I'm going to pop that back in my machine and stitch round number six. Now we're back onto the quilting again. So round seven, eight, and nine are all going to be quilting these three areas. So I'm going to start with number seven. Now for number eight. And number nine and I'm now going to change my thread back to the gold to do the decorative stitching along the joins so now I'm going to stitch round number 10 and now round 11 now that that's all stitched I'm going to remove the tape Along here is where we're going to join the first piece that we made like so. So we have to trim away up to the stitching there and also we can do along here as well. Now, this bit I do find that I have to pin. I'm going to lay this line of stitching. I'm just going to trim that back a bit, make sure that it's as close to the stitch line as it can possibly be. Because if you don't do that, you'll end up with fabric poking out once the top stitching has been done. And that's not very pretty. Okay, this one. So I'm going to lay this line of stitching over the top of this one and I'm going to pin it in place. Now you need to make sure that your outside line here matches up with this one here and the edge line here matches up with the one there. My pins are going well out of the way of the stitch line. I always try and put them as close to the hoop as I possibly can. Not my pins everywhere. <laughs> yeah. Now, if you have to slow your machine down, which is, it's recommended to do, mine hasn't got uh, a button that can slow it right down to virtually nothing. So I, you sometimes have to resort to um, the on, you know, start and stop button instead. But I see how it goes. Most of the time, I can get away with just a, a slow stitching at 350 stitches a minute. So now, just make sure that that is 
on top of the stitch line not too far over here because otherwise it's going to poke through the top stitching and I don't want that okay I think that's okay I'm going to pop that in my machine and it's now going to do the joining stitch and then after that it's going to do the decorative top stitch over the top now between those two rounds once it's done the joining stitch check to see if you've got any pieces of fabric uh, sticking out if you have trim them off then uh, rather than waiting until after the decorative stitch so now for round number 13 which will do the partial um, decorative stitching along there and now number 14 to stitch the rest of the way along okay so I'm going to take the pins out and I'm now going to remove it from the hoop This piece of um, stabiliser here can be removed. here as well. Oops. Mm -hmm. Better fill this here. I'm not too far yeah. Okay. I'll leave this bit for when I trim up the edge um, once I've joined the next piece on. So now, as I did before, I'm going to turn this over, take my little piece of card and mark half an inch all the way around. And now I'm going to cut it out. Okay, so there's our two pieces joined. I'm now going to hoop up my stabiliser for part number three and exactly the same thing as we've been doing. Pop that aside, grab my fabrics. I've changed my thread back to white again. I've loaded file number three and I'm now going to pop it in, stitch round, round number one, which is the outline. So I'm now going to place my batting over the top of the outline and stitch it down. And this is round number two. So now I'm going to trim away the excess batting again. That noise in the background is my cat playing around. <laughs> okay, the fabric order on this one is one, two and three this time. So to give you an idea when that's on here like so, it'd be one, two and three. Okay. I'm going to place my first fabric and 
first one goes the right way up. I don't have to worry too much about the sides, but I do have to worry about this. Uh, sorry, yes, it is the sides on this way round, but the actual sides on the stocking are actually at the top and bottom this time, and these are the ones that I have to make sure that I've, I've left the seam allowance rather than the middle one here. Okay, so next fabric number two, which is here. So I'm going to fold this back as I've done many times before. <laughs> Make a crease so that I can see where to line up this fabric and then um, I'm going to line it up like this way up this time. So that when that folds back like that it leaves all the seam allowance across here that covers that whole area. Okay. Put a bit of tape on. Put it back in my machine and stitch round number three to hold it down. Now I'm going to remove the tape. Trim off the thready and fold this back and crease the join really well with my nail. And I'm going to pop the tape back down here where that, uh, there's the two joins here and here just so that the foot doesn't get caught in it and I'm now going to stitch round number four but we'll hold those down so now I'm going to trim up along here and place fabric number three and when placing this one be careful because you need to be able to cover both those ends yeah that's good that And now I'm going to pop that back in my machine and stitch around number five. And remove the tape. Fold that back and crease it really well. And then stick it down so that it stays nice and taut. And I'm going to once again cover these little pieces here where the fabrics are going to join. in my machine and stitch round number six. The next three rounds are the quilting rounds, so seven, eight and nine. I'm now I'm going to stitch round number seven. Round number eight. And round number nine. I'm now going to change my thread back to gold so that it can do the decorative top stitching along the joins. Now stitching round number 10. And round number 11. Okay, I'm now going to remove this tape. And trim back along these two lines here. I want to leave fabric here and here for my seam allowance so I'm not going to trim that away ok 
Okay, it's now to join the other two pieces on, get it on the right side, it might help, onto here as before. Taking care to line up the outside edges and not to go over too far um, on the actual zigzag part. So I'm going to use my pins again for this. And repeat yet again. Don't get your pins in the way of your stitch line. Keep them out of the way as far as possible. I'm just going to pop the pin in here just to pull that back slightly so that it doesn't go too far over. Uh, I want the two stitch lines to sit on top of each other rather than cross. Okay, I'm now going to pop that back in my machine and stitch round number 12, which is the joining stitch, and then afterwards the two decorative. Um, stitches and now for the decorative stitches 14 and 15 okay, number 15 I'm now going to remove the pins and the tape Remove it from the hoop. Oops. Put those out of the way so we don't want to clatter around. Okay, I can remove this piece along here. And as I did previously, I'm going to mark out my half inch on this side and on this side with my piece of card and my chalk pen. This one's quite an easy one this side, it's just straight. <laughs> now for the other side, this one's got a slight curve to it, so just going to follow the line. Okay. So now, as I did previously, trim it away. And across here. And the other side. OK, 
Okay, so we're now three quarters of the way there. Just the last piece to hoop up. Just clear this away quickly. Oops. Okay. So I'm going to hoop up my stabilizer for the last time. Put it back in my in my machine, sorry, and stitch round number one on file number four. I'm now going to place my batting over the outline as we did before, and stitch it down. So this is round number two. Okay, so that's stitched out. The stitch order for the fabrics for this one is going to be uh, top left is number one, bottom left number two and the right number three. So I'm now going to pop my first fabric face up um, on the, um, over the line and I want to make sure that I cover this area here for my seam allowance because that is going to be the site eventually it'll be round that way with that on there so I want all my seam allowance at the top here so I'm going to lay that down like that then fabric number two comes across this line here so I'm going to just press my crease in and then I'm going to place fabric number to well this one I'm using the back of this one because I want a plain green here so I'm going to place that with my wrong side facing up and then that will go across that line and fold across here like so so I just need to make sure that I get it the actual um, fabric uh, needs to cover this corner of course so and then when that folds back that will give me plenty of seam allowance there so I'm going to pop some tape on pop it in my machine and stitch round number three to stitch it down Now take off my tape, pull that back over the line here. Now I'm going to have to redo this piece because I've just folded that back and this corner's missing here. So I'm going to redo that. I'm now going to stitch round number three. I'm now take the tape off and pull this back and give it a good creasing with my nail okay now I'm going to stick this like so Ooh, I know what I forgot to do and I'm going to do it now before I go any further because otherwise it makes it difficult I'm going to remove the batting All the excess batting that and it's easier to do that now before it gets stuck down any further so once you've got all the seam allowances and bits of fabrics over the edge here it makes it very difficult to cut it away easily Okay, that won't cause any problems now. 
I'm going to pull that back, as I said a minute ago, <laughs> and I'm going to tape it down so it holds nice and taut. And I'm also going to do the join areas. And it's now going to stitch both of those fabrics down and that be with round number four. Okay, now I can remove the tape. And I'm going to trim up along here before I join fabric number three. Bearing in mind that this is my seam allowance area here, so I'm going to leave as much as I possibly can there. Okay. So now I'm going to place fabric number three in place. Once again, face down and then along this line so that when it folds back I've got my seam allowance top and bottom. Okay, a little bit of tape and I'm going to stitch that down with round number five. Now I'm going to remove the tape, fold that back, and crease it well. Just going to pop a little clip on there, just to hold the fabric, and a little bit of tape on the drawings there. Like so. And I'm now going to pop that back into my machine and stitch round number six. And the next three rounds are the quilting stitch. I can now take my clips off of that. And I'm going to start with round number seven, which is going to do this area here. Round number eight, which is going to do top left here. round number nine. I've changed my thread uh, to gold now to do the decorative top stitching along the joins so I'm now stitching round number 10 and now number 11. Okay so it's time to cut away the excess here so that we can join the other pieces to it. So I'm just going to want to preserve as much as this as I can for my seam allowance. Okay. So now I'm going to, oops, that's my stabiliser just fell on the floor, sorry about that. I'm just going to add this to here now and as before take care to line up the edges and I'm going to pin it in place so I'm trim that back a little bit further And 
round yet again, pins well out the way of the stitch line. tape on the ends I'm going to pop that back in my machine and stitch round number 12 and number 13 and number 14 Okay, now for the decorative stitching. So I'm doing round number 15. Round 16. And number 17. Okay, I can now take the pins out. The tape off. Remove it from the hoop. And I'm now going to trim this bit of stabiliser off. Exactly the same as before, it's now time to do a half inch seam allowance all the way around the edge. And now I can trim it up. I'm just going to trim that little bit of fabric here that's flapping about. Like so. Okay. So now I've got the template to be able to cut out the lining and the backing as well. Um, for this one I'm just going to do a plain back, putting a little bit of batting in between the lining and the, the back fabric as well. So. I'll go and get the fabric and then we'll start drawing it out and cutting it out. Okay, so it's now time to cut all our pieces out for the lining and for the back. So I've pinned my stocking piece onto the fabric that I'm going to have as the back and I've put them both wrong sides together because when this is made, obviously I want this fabric facing outwards. So that's pinned on, I'm just going to cut around it. I'm not going to bother drawing, I'm just going to cut around it as is. Okay, so that's that piece made. Let's just trim that up a little bit better. So I can now take the pins out and then I'm going to do exactly the same with the lining both because the lining is obviously going to be showing out this way um, I need to put the two sides the two wrong sides together there they are mirror pairs So there they are, my linings are cut out and I, they, they're both mirror images. I've also cut out a piece of 
fleece batting that's going to go between the back lining and the back piece because unlike the front it's otherwise it would just be two pieces of fabric and I want a little bit of body to it so that will go between those two pieces. I've also cut out four pieces of faux fur and these are going to form the cuff on each piece and there's one for each uh, of these pieces so you've got one for the front, one for the front lining, one for the back and one for the back lining. I've cut them to eight by four and a half. They're slightly wider than they need to be, but I'll trim them down afterwards. And on the backs of these, I've also put um, a half inch line that I will be stitching along once I've joined them to the, the lining in the front and the back. So I'm now going to pin those. I'm starting with the back piece and I've laid that over the top of the um, wadding fleece and I'm going to take the faux fur and there's a nap to this and I want the nap uh, going from top to bottom so what I'm going to do is I've put it just above the uh, top of the stocking uh, so that the nap runs downwards and then I'm just going to flip it over and then pin it to this piece, the back and the wadding, like so. And I pin that all the way along. Now, when you're pinning fur, it tends to walk, so just check that, that you are edge to edge. Okay, so now when that is sewn and that comes up the right way, the nap is running top to bottom in line with the stocking just the way I want it to be and I'm going to do exactly the same on all the other pieces so I've got my stocking front here and I'm going to put the fur again with the nap side uh, running the right way flip it over and pin it I'm not adding any batting to this piece because it's already got it sewn into it half a dozen pins out <laughs> and one more okay so check the nap again and it's running from top to bottom that's fine I'm now going to do the same with the lining now this is the right side of the back lining exactly the same way Nap top to bottom, flip it over and pin. Okay, and now for the last piece. This is the front lining. So, nap top to bottom, flip it over. So now the next step will be to uh, stitch along this line to join the, the fur to the various pieces. Now I'm going to take the pins out of these. Okay, uh, these pieces are the front lining and obviously the front. Now we've got these pieces that we need to join next. So what I'm going to do is turn them over, line them up and pin them across here. And then I'm going to do exactly the same with the back pieces.
now I'm going to stitch along those lines on both pieces. Okay, I'm now going to take the pins out. Okay. Now that all the pins have been removed, I've just laid the back piece, so that's the back and its lining, flat out on my bench. And I'm going to take the front piece and I'm going to place it so that the right sides are together, so it's face down. That's the right way up and the right way up is going face down onto the back. And then I'm going to pin it um, on top of each other. Now I do have to leave a gap and I'm going to leave it in the um, lining uh, of about hand's width so I can turn it out the right way. I'm just going to place my ruler on the two edges there of each piece and I'm going to trim it up with my rotary cutter. Now these pieces here I'm going to pin back onto itself so that when it goes through the machine that and it's finished in that the right way, they all it it lays flat at the top rather than producing a bulge on the seam. Okay, all it remains for me to do now is to continue my half inch seam allowance marking all the way around. And just mark it, you know, as before from the edge. don't need to worry about the side because I stitch on the stitch line that's already there so now all that remains is for me to sew it up leaving my gap here to turn it out the right way I can now remove all the pins Now that the pins are out, I'm just going to check all the areas that are bulky to make sure that they've stitched properly. Because it's really annoying if you get it all turned out the right way and to find that you've got a little gap where it, it hasn't stitched properly because of the bulk. And it just allows you then to re-stitch it with less annoyance. <laughs> okay, that's fine. I'm now going to turn it inside out. So find my gap, put my hand in and I'm going to pull the toe through first of the right side and the back because that's the bulkiest part so okay so I grab hold of the toe and gently feed it through. I don't want to put too much pressure on the opening 
uh, sides because obviously they tear them apart and I don't want that. If you find that um, your seams don't lay very flat, especially around the toe, you can trim them back closer to the stitch line if you wish to. You've got plenty of seam allowance to be able to do that. Okay, so now the other end. So now it's a case of getting the seams to lay nicely all around the edge. And I find the easiest way sometimes is just to roll it between my fingers. This end. Okay, so now I'm going to hand stitch that gap closed just with a ladder stitch and that just means that I go one side back through the other and just snake it backwards and forwards until um, I reach the top here and then I just tie it off and it gives you a virtually invisible seam. Now that's stitched up, all it remains me for to do is to put the lining inside the stocking. Now I just have to press it and there it is all nice and pressed, my lovely crazy patch stocking. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please give me a thumbs up if you found it useful. Don't forget to subscribe and I hope to see you again next time. Bye.